Day 168. Nehemiah 7 9. When the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, singers, and levites were appointed. Then I put my brother Hanani in charge of Jerusalem, along with Hananiah the commander of the fortress, because he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. And I told them, Do not open the gates of Jerusalem until the sun is hot. While the guards are on duty, keep the doors shut and securely fastened. And appoint the residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their posts and some at their own homes. Now the city was large and spacious, but there were few people in it, and the houses had not yet been rebuilt. Then my God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the people to be enrolled by genealogy. I found the genealogical register of those who had first returned, and I found the following written in it, These are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles carried away to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar its king. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town, accompanied by Zerubbabel, Shua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispareth, Bigvai, Neham, and Bana. This is the count of the men of Israel, the descendants of Parash, 2172, the descendants of Shephesha, 372, the descendants of Ara, 652, the descendants of Pahat Moab, through the line of Shua and Job, 2818, the descendants of Elam, 1254, the descendants of Zato, 845, the descendants of Zakay, 760, the descendants of Benwi, 648, the descendants of Babai, 628, the descendants of Isjid, 2322, the descendants of Adonikam, 667, the descendants of Bigvai, 2067, the descendants of Adin, 655, the descendants of Adar, through Hezekiah. 98, the descendants of Hashem, 328, the descendants of Bezai, 324, the descendants of Haraf, 112, the descendants of Gibeon, 95, the men of Bethlehem and Netapha, 188, the men of Anadhoth, 128, the men of Bethes Maveth, 42, the men of Kiriath Jerim, Chephirah, and Biroth. 743, the men of Rama and Geba, 621, the men of Mike Mash, 122, the men of Bethel and Ai, 123, the men of the other Nebo, 52, the descendants of the other Elam, 1254, the descendants of Haram, 320, the men of Jericho, 345, the men of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721, and the descendants of Sinai, 3930. The priests, the descendants of Jedeah, through the house of Shua, 973, the descendants of Immer, 1052, the descendants of Pashur, 1247, and the descendants of Haram, 1017. The Levites, the descendants of Shua, through Kadmiel, through the line of Hodava, 74. The singers, the descendants of Azaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, the descendants of Adar, the descendants of Talman, the descendants of Akub, the descendants of Hadadah, and the descendants of Shobai, 138 in all. The temple servants, the descendants of Zihah, the descendants of Hajufa, the descendants of Tabaeth, the descendants of Kuroz, the descendants of Sia, the descendants of Padon, the descendants of Lebanon, the descendants of Hagaba, the descendants of Shalma, the descendants of Hanan. The descendants of Gidel, the descendants of Gahar, the descendants of Rea, the descendants of Rezin, the descendants of Nekada, the descendants of Gazam, the descendants of Ua, the descendants of Basi, the descendants of Basay, the descendants of Munim, the descendants of Nefushasim. The descendants of Bakbuk, the descendants of Hakupha, the descendants of Harher, the descendants of Bajlith, the descendants of Mehida, the descendants of Harsha, the descendants of Barkos, the descendants of Sisira, the descendants of Timah, the descendants of Nesia, and the descendants of Hatifa. The descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, the descendants of Sepharath, the descendants of Perida, the descendants of Jala, the descendants of Darkin, the descendants of Gidel, the descendants of Shephisha, the descendants of Hadal, the descendants of Pochereth Hazabam, and the descendants of Ammon. The temple servants and descendants of the servants of Solomon numbered 392 in all. The following came up from Telmela, Telharsha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer, 
but could not prove that their families were descended from Israel, the descendants of Delia, the descendants of Tobia, and the descendants of Nekeda, 642 in all. And from among the priests, the descendants of Hobiah, the descendants of Hakaz, and the descendants of Barzilla, who had married a daughter of Barzilla the Jalitite and was called by their name. These men searched for their family records, but they could not find them and so were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor ordered them not to eat the most holy things until there was a priest to consult the Urim and Thummim. The whole assembly numbered 42,360, in addition to their 7,337 menservants and maidservants, as well as their 245 male and female singers. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the heads of the families contributed to the project. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 derricks of gold, 50 bowls, and 530 priestly garments. And some of the heads of the families gave to the treasury for the project 20,000 derricks of gold and 2,200 minas of silver. The rest of the people gave a total of 20,000 derricks of gold, 2,000 minas of silver, and 67 priestly garments. So the priests, levites, gatekeepers, singers, and temple servants, along with some of the people and the rest of the Israelites, settled in their own towns. And by the seventh month the Israelites had settled in their towns. At that time all the people gathered together in the square before the water gate, and they asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could listen and understand. So Ezra read it aloud from daybreak until noon as he faced the square before the water gate, in front of the men and women and those who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform built for this occasion. At his right side stood Mattithiah, Shema, Anna, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Masiah, and at his left were Pedaiah, Missal, Malchijah, Hashem, Hashbadnah, Zechariah, and Meshalem. Ezra opened the book in full view of all the people, since he was standing above them all, and as he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and with their hands uplifted, all the people said, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Shua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akab, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Masiah, Keletah, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peleah, instructed the people in the law as they stood in their places. So they read from the book of the law of God, explaining it and giving insight, so that the people could understand what was being read. Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all of them, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. Then Nehemiah told them, Go and eat what is rich, drink what is sweet, and send out portions to those who have nothing prepared, since today is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, since today is holy. Do not grieve. Then all the people began to eat and drink, to send out portions, and to rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that had been made known to them. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and Levites, gathered around Ezra the scribe to study the words of the law. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. So they proclaimed this message and spread it throughout their towns and in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hill country and bring back branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees, to make booths, as it is written. And the people went out, brought back branches, and made booths on their own rooftops, in their courtyards, in the court of the house of God, and in the squares by the water gate and by the gate of Ephraim. The whole assembly who had returned from exile made booths and lived in them. From the days of Joshua son of Nun until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated like this. And there was great rejoicing. Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. The Israelites kept the feast for seven days, and on the eighth day they held an assembly, according to the ordinance. On the twenty-fourth day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth, with dust on their heads. Those of Israelite descent separated themselves from all the foreigners, and they stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. While they stood in their places, 
they read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a quarter of the day, and they spent another quarter of the day in confession and worship of the Lord their God. And the Levites, Shua, Bani, Kadmiel, Shabanya, Buni, Sherebiah, Bani, and Chanani, stood on the raised platform and cried out in a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Shua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hashabnia, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shabanya, and Pethiah, said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting, blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You created the heavens, the highest heavens with all their host, the earth, and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to all things, and the host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram, who brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you, and made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites and Hittites, of the Amorites and Perizzites, of the Jebusites and Girgashites, to give it to his descendants. You have kept your promise, because you are righteous. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, you heard their cry at the Red Sea. You performed signs and wonders against Pharaoh, all his officials, and all the people of his land, for you knew they had acted with arrogance against our fathers. You made a name for yourself that endures to this day. You divided the sea before them, and they crossed through it on dry ground. You hurled their pursuers into the depths like a stone into raging waters. You led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, to light for them the way in which they should travel. You came down on Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven. You gave them just ordinances, true laws, and good statutes and commandments. You revealed to them your holy Sabbath and gave them commandments and statutes and laws through your servant Moses. In their hunger you gave them bread from heaven, in their thirst you brought them water from the rock. You told them to go in and possess the land which you had sworn to give them. But they and our fathers became arrogant and stiff-necked and did not obey your commandments. They refused to listen and failed to remember the wonders you performed among them. They stiffened their necks and appointed a leader to return them to their bondage in Egypt. But you are a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in loving devotion, and you did not forsake them. Even when they cast for themselves an image of a calf and said, This is your God who brought you up out of Egypt, and when they committed terrible blasphemies, you in your great compassion did not forsake them in the wilderness. By day the pillar of cloud never turned away from guiding them on their path, and by the night the pillar of fire illuminated the way they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. For forty years you sustained them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. You gave them kingdoms and peoples and allotted to them every corner of the land. So they took the land of Sihon king of Heshbon and of Og king of Bashan. You multiplied their descendants like the stars of heaven and brought them to the land you had told their fathers to enter and possess. So their descendants went in and possessed the land, you subdued before them the Canaanites dwelling in the land. You delivered into their hands the kings and peoples of the land, to do with them as they wished. They captured fortified cities and fertile land and took houses full of all goods, wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate and were filled, they grew fat and delighted in your great goodness. But they were disobedient and rebelled against you, they flung your law behind their backs. They killed your prophets, who had admonished them to return to you. They committed terrible blasphemies. So you delivered them into the hands of enemies who oppressed them, and in their time of distress they cried out to you. From heaven you heard them, and in your great compassion you gave them deliverers who saved them from the hands of their enemies. But as soon as they had rest, they again did evil in your sight. So you abandoned them to the hands of their enemies, who had dominion over them. When they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven, and you delivered them many times in your compassion. You admonished them to turn back to your law, but they were arrogant and disobeyed your commandments. They sinned against your ordinances, by which a man will live if he practices them. They stubbornly shrugged their shoulders, they stiffened their necks and would not obey. You were patient with them for many years, and your spirit admonished them through your prophets. Yet they would not listen, so you gave them into the hands of the neighboring peoples. But in your great compassion, you did not put an end to them, nor did you forsake them, for you are a gracious and compassionate God. So now, our God, the great and mighty and awesome God who keeps his gracious covenant, do not view lightly all the hardship that has come upon us, and upon our kings and leaders, our priests and prophets, our ancestors and all your people, 
from the days of the kings of Assyria until today. You are just in all that has befallen us, because you have acted faithfully, while we have acted wickedly. Our kings and leaders and priests and fathers did not obey your law or listen to your commandments and warnings that you gave them. For even while they were in their kingdom, with the abundant goodness that you had given them, and in the spacious and fertile land that you had set before them, they would not serve you or turn from their wicked ways. So here we are today as slaves in the land you gave our fathers to enjoy its fruit and goodness, here we are as slaves. Its abundant harvest goes to the kings you have set over us because of our sins. And they rule over our bodies and our livestock as they please. We are in great distress. In view of all this, we make a binding agreement, putting it in writing and sealing it with the names of our leaders, levites, and priests. Acts 3. One afternoon Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those entering the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked directly at him, as did John. Look at us. Said Peter. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Taking him by the right hand, Peter helped him up, and at once the man's feet and ankles were made strong. He sprang to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and leaping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man clung to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and ran to them in the walkway called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why are you surprised by this? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over and rejected him before Pilate, even though he had decided to release him. You rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of the fact. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him this complete healing in your presence. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But in this way God has fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent, then, and turn back, so that your sins may be wiped away, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, the Christ, who has been appointed for you. Heaven must take him in until the time comes for the restoration of all things, which God announced long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. You must listen to him in everything he tells you. Everyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from among his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have proclaimed these days. And you are sons of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers when he said to Abraham, Through your offspring all the families of the earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. 